your favorite host, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And today we have an expert coming to the show here to help us talk about he's actually a certified divorce financial analyst, one of 3,000 in the entire world. And this man is here to help us talk about how we can do better when going through the divorce process financially. This man is a gem hidden in a, a mountain of hay, and I found him here for the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. So you won't want to miss one second of what he has to lay down here on this exciting episode. Stay tuned. Stay with us. Here we go. Hey everyone, it's your host, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show, and I have today coming to the platform, Mr. Jamie Lima. There, there are plenty of wealth building gurus out there, uh, aficionados, but this man is a true blue in here, living, breathing. He's like you, he's like me, and he's here to help us get to a better place. If you all find yourself in a situation where you've ever been experienced the rough patches of divorce or talk to anyone who has gone through a divorce, not once, not twice, anytime, it's always the same. It's always difficult. It's always hard. After going through a tremendously expensive and emotionally draining divorce himself in 2017, this man sought after and went on an absolute mission and launched his company, Allegiant Divorce Solutions as a sister company to his financial planning firm, Woodson Wealth Management, to help you, to help me, to help all of us get to a better place financially and come out maybe a little bit better through the divorce process. So this man, I can't hold him back without any further ado. Help me welcome to the stage, Mr. Jamie Lima. Wow. I don't know. If, I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to live up to that that introduction man that was awesome oh you already did sir it's all <laughs> you i'm talking about you thank you sir for making time for us my audience today on the gentleman style podcast show you are necessary and you are doing a fantastic work and i thank you for being here today with us and we are going to dive into the sauce sir I, my my intro of you did no justice and i, I really want to pinpoint um, something here because you are an expert, a professional certified financial planner, love that designation. And also you branched off into divorce. You went through a divorce yourself, but what, what was the catalyst? When did you know, I want to ask you, when did you know, unfortunately your marriage was, was going South for you? Oh, that's a good question. Nobody's asked me that. Uh, even on all the podcasts I've been on, that's a great question. I, I feel like for me, you know, it, it's one of those things where you, you you kind of know about three years ahead of the time when you say, like, listen, it's 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 time for us to, to go our separate ways. It was probably about three years leading up to it. Um, you know, there are there are a number of things that were involved, a number, number of reasons why it, it, it came to fruition. And, and we ended up, you know, in the situation that we were. But um, it was probably about a three year lead up before I had the 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 gall, so to speak, to be able to, to say, Hey, listen, this is just not working. I think we, I think we need to go our separate ways. Um, I had, I had really wanted to start doing this divorce financial planning work that I do now. I wanted to do it about 10 years ago, maybe 10 or 12 years ago or so. And I was with a big, I was with a big name company. If I mentioned their name, everybody would know. But at the time, they were like, well, you know, we don't really do that kind of work here and we don't want you to get bogged down in it so, and we don't want it to be a distraction. So, you know, put your head down, kid, and, and make some more phone calls. And and that's I listened to their advice, which was unfortunate because a few short years after me, uh, you know, approaching them with the the desire to go down this path, uh, you know, I went through my divorce. And, and had I had the experience, you know, the hands on experience, the book knowledge. Uh, of, of, the, of doing this work and, and the experience of, of working with the court systems and the attorneys and so on and so forth, I probably would have put myself in a much better position, but that's effectively what propelled me to do the work that I do today. 
That's major. And and you're you're right. There are warning signs, there are triggers, there are things we all notice in the beginning when that that key moment when we know the relationship was going south. And so did, did, did it sounds like you were the one that initiated the divorce, am I correct? 100%. 100%. And and yeah. you know, I mean full disclosure and and I think this is, you know, she we we had always had an agreement that, you know, she would stay at home and take care of the kids, you know, for the for a period of time which which I ensured that we could do and it finally got to the point where you know the kids were in school full time and it was a matter of like okay now 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 it's going to take two people to row this boat here it, you know let's let's start using our education and the experience we have and so on start to build our careers together and unfortunately she didn't want to have any part of that so <laughs> I was like okay I guess this is going to be this is how this is going to go and and I just I, 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 for me, did not want to be in a relationship where it was going to be just me responsible for the the financial future of my household. I had done that enough. I had done that for you know twelve or thirteen years at that point, and um, it was never the agreement for me to be in that position. So it, you know, uh, the writing was on the wall, and it was time for me to go in a different direction. Um, um, you know, and there was a variety of other issues that that were present, but from a financial perspective, that was that was one of the one of the impetuses for sure. That's that's huge. And I, I thank you for for being so open, so transparent, because that's real. You're you are real. At the end of the day, the designations are incredible. They're necessary for what you do business wise. But at the end of the day, you're a human being. Right. And you 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 did the work you set up front. You know, I, I have no problem supporting you, which we all want that. Right. We, we all want a partner to support them. You reminded me of of a friend that went through the same thing. We had a discussion. We had a roadmap, a plan of uh, you'll stay at home with the kids um, until the kids and then the kids grow up. Right. But I, I think we never we don't you looked farther enough ahead to say, OK, also, when there's no need for you to stay at home, then we'll uh, tra uh, transition to both of us contributing to the household as well. And not to say that. A stay-at-home mom doesn't contribute, but financially, in in, in dollars and cents and tangible cents and money, um, we'll transition that way. And and sometimes people don't follow the agreed upon path, and that's big, that's huge, huge, huge. It, it really is. And and we work with a ton of stay-at-home moms, and my my you know, I, I and I have all the respect in the world for for the women that do, and and, and even the stay-at-home dads. There's a lot of stay-at-home dads that are out there, which is. They are much better men than I am because I went to my I went to work to go relax. Right. We had we had you know three kids under the age of like you know 12 or whatever it was at that point. And I don't know, you know, if you have kids, but you know, I'm sure a lot of your listeners do. And sometimes it's like chaos, right? You you're you're working all day long and then you have kid at kids' activities and they have school functions and they have homework and all this other stuff. I'm like, forget this. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go to my nice quiet office get my free coffee, have adult conversation all day long. This is like, this is like, I'm big in this. Right. But, but so, so I could never be a stay at home dad. That's just, that's just not me as a person, but I totally respect the people that do that work because it is. And it, I say this to, to a lot of the, the people that we work with, it is, it is not easy. And there is, there is, you know, uh, it, it when if, and when a divorce happens, you should be re not necessarily rewarded, but you should be compensated rightly for your role in managing the household and, and helping your spouse with his or her career and so on. I totally understand all that. But at the same time, like you mentioned, if there's an agreement in place and this is the plan and I'm a planner by heart, right? I'm a type, the type A financial planner, all my ducks in a row. And I want to know what's happening one, three, five and 10 years down the into the future. That's just my nature. If I have that plan in place and then all of a sudden, for whatever reason, you decide you want to disrupt that, that's that's a problem. At least for me, it was. And that's that's ultimately where, you know, why things went the way they did. I want to I want to I want to highlight this, ladies and gentlemen watching this. I want to highlight something he's saying. Right. He's not removing the value of a stay at home parent. He's acknowledging himself. He know thyself. Mm -hmm. Right. He's acknowledging himself and saying that stay at home. dad is not for him. And someone changing the plan without communicating to the other party is a no-go in any scenario, whether it be business, personal, relationship, any any of the ships, right? Relationships, right? 
when you change the plan without communicating to the other party, that's a no go. And that's not fair. That's not fair. So someone had a different intentions when the kids got older and that was no longer a part of the plan. And, and, and Mr. Mr. Lima is acknowledging the pride and admiration to those that decide to stay at home because there is a dollar value to what you do, but it, it's all a part of a plan. So stick to the plan. And if you can't agree with a plan, something should have been said in the beginning. Hey, I, I have no intentions of going back to work um, at all. Right. And that, that, that allows him the opportunity to adjust as necessary, but mm -hmm. you know, we, we got to work with what we got. And, and he, I'm, I know just, just by, you can tell the big heart and big nature of this man, um, that he did what he had to do, um, for the betterment of everything and peace of mind. Right. So powerful, powerful, powerful round of applause for Mr. Lee. <laughs> That's so sweet. So, Thank you again for your transparency. I want to get to the, the science of this because I've never heard of your skill set, your, 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 your designator. Um, you are a certified divorce financial analyst. Can you explain what that does and how you specifically assist clients at your company, Allegiant Divorce Solutions? Please. Absolutely. And most people understand the role of a financial planner in general. I think for the most part, people understand that role. And, and I'm a certified financial planner, so we, we've you know taken our education and, and the work that we do and the ethics and everything else to a to a higher level, being certified for that work. But um, you think a financial planner, as we all know, they they help people with things like planning for their retirement and estate planning, insurance needs, um, 401k plans at work, helping you with your executive compensation at work. All of those things, all more of like forward looking things, like what. How do I achieve the goals and objectives that I have for the next five, 10, 20 years of my life and one day be able to retire and do whatever it is I want to do? That's the traditional financial planner role that I play. With the specialization as a certified divorce financial analyst, CDFA, we help everyone with all of the financial nuances of a divorce. Okay. So we'll help with things like um, dividing up, figuring out the best strategy around dividing up assets in the divorce. You know, do I keep the 401k or do I keep the house? We'll help with how taxes impact some of those decisions, child support calculations, alimony, spousal support calculations. We'll help with budgeting and cash flow because day one of your newfound single life after the, the gavel hits the table and, and the judge says that you're divorced. You, you need to figure out what you, how you're going to be able to, to live your life and, and you need to know what kind of money is coming in, what kind of money is going out, and we'll work with you on budgeting and cash flow needs and, and that type of thing. I'm also a certified mediator, so one of the things we'd like to try to do is keep people out of the courts through by way of mediation. And through that process, we can help people come to a fair and equitable agreement that is financially feasible for everyone and do it for a fraction of the cost and put the control back in our client's hands by mediating the case. So there's a, there's a lot there. There's a lot to unpack. And, and But think of the role that we play as a CDFA is helping you make decisions in the here and now relative to the divorce and make, helping, making sure you make good decisions so you can walk away from this thing. You know, I, I, there's never a win-win, but how do we help you lose less is ideally where, where we're at. And then how some of those decisions that you're going to make impact you in the future is where we layer in the CFP role that we play as well. So there's a little bit of both roles in the work that we do, but primarily CDFA is helped in the here and now relative to the decisions you have to make uh, as part of the divorce. Powerful. I hear you. I hear you. And I see you brother with the here and now, but a lot of the things you're describing are, I, I can see there's a benefit almost in, in even before the marriage, right? Even before in the, in the, pre, in the pre marital stages, um, is there any work that you do beforehand? Um, are there any, um, work that you can do, um, in marital counseling, right. To kind of mm -hmm. just put these things on the table beforehand, because you're, you're talking about figuring out the money, the, the, the assets, the kids, the child rearing, but those are all things that I feel people should be discussing before they even, um, um, hit the other gavel where the judge hits the other gavel and yeah. say, you are now married. Um, any pre-planning there? Well, I think 
people overlook this all the time because there is such a stigma associated with it. But if we could just remove the stigma from prenuptial agreements and that the, the concept of the prenuptial agreement, if we just re reduce that stigma and just eliminate it altogether, I think we'd be in a much better position, a lot of us, leading into the leading into the marriage and i'm a big fan of therapy and i'm a big fan of couples counseling and all this stuff and and that type of thing and all this handling helping you handle the psychological aspects of the divorce but i guess the way that i look at it is is we we have homeowners insurance if we buy a house we have auto insurance if we purchase a vehicle we have life insurance to ensure that if something happens to me that my family's going to be okay you know, we have umbrella insurance. I mean, the list goes on and on of all the insurances that we carry. Why don't we have marriage insurance? It, it would make so much more sense if we just agreed to put marriage insurance in place before we sign on the dotted line and create this. You're basically creating a corporate structure, right? So, and we, and, but there's so much emotion involved in getting married and all the love and the rainbows and butterflies and everything else. And people fail to prepare for the worst. And having a prenuptial agreement insure, in place as marriage insurance, I think is gonna, it, it could be a game changer, but there's such a stigma around it, nobody ever wants to consider it. And we talk about it with all of our wealth management clients, especially the younger ones that are going down this path, just at least to make sure we have this conversation with them. Do they always act on it? Not so much, but at least we've had the conversation. You've tried, you've done the work. You've yep. done the work. At least you brought it up, right? That's a part of that fiduciary responsibility that you have as a certified financial planner. So it carries over, I'm sure, in mm -hmm. the same realm as a divorce financial um, uh, associate uh, expert. Um, you, you, <laughs> so it sounds like um, you are for prenuptial agreements. Did Did you have one? Did you have a prenup? I did not. I did not. My my, you know, to be honest, in my situation, it. We, we didn't have real, I mean, we met when we were 21 years old, 22 years old and, you know, dated for a few years and then got married. So there really wasn't, there really weren't many assets at stake. You know, so that's, that's the other challenge that a lot of, you know, young, young, uh, people that are getting married and young newlyweds, uh, faces, they don't really, they don't really have anything and they're kind of building all this wealth together. So, you know, prenuptial agreement is not really going to help in, in that regard, but, you know, certainly for, for, for second marriages or in situations where we're, what we're seeing these days is that people waiting are waiting a much longer period of time and dating for a much longer period of time to get before they get married. So, you know, if, if you look back, you know, 20 years ago when I was in that relationship, we didn't have any assets. It wasn't that big of a deal, but some people are coming into these marriages where they 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 work in the technology sector. They have stock options and and executive compensation, and they've really started to save for retirement. They have a pretty sizable four hundred one k, and they have savings. We see young people that have real assets these days. So I think it's you know it's it's more as we move forward, and that becomes more of the norm than it was even just twenty years ago. I think there's going to be a, a much higher appetite for it. And again, if we could remove that stigma, I think uh, there, would, there would certainly be much, many more people that are actually going down that path of, of getting the prenup. There it is. You said it. You said it again, and I'm I'm glad. This is good. I want to I want to I want to pin I want to stick a pin in this. The stigma that you're referring to, right? When I hear the word prenup, I think when most people, especially women, when they hear the word prenup, they mm -hmm. they think. Um, that famous movie scene where she's sitting across this long extended table. I'm sitting on my end with my lawyers and I slide you a piece of paper, say sign here or else, right? That negative, nasty movie trailer stigma is what is usually, I feel is prevailing in people's mind when it comes to a prenup. But, and, and I think that's what you're speaking to. And I feel I, I'm confident with you and I stand by stand by what you're saying that if we can get past that and realize that prenups are not as negative as people think. I, I had the pleasure, the honor and the courtesy of interviewing a lawyer on the show who specializes in divorce, but uh -huh. she um, primarily advocates and specializes in helping people develop well thought out prenups. And she came on show and debunked a lot of myths behind prenups right now one of the things that shocked me 
was that you can't <laughs> in a prenuptial agreement, you can't order your partner to not date anyone. Oh, I don't want if we divorce, I don't want him to bring anybody around my kids, any other girls around my kids. Legally, you can't do that. You can't restrict who he sees or who he spends time with um, after the initial divorce. That's illegal. And, and that's a that's a that's a um, illegal act against his rights. Um, what are some things that you have seen as a professional? What are some top killers of marriages that you've seen in your professional opinion? What was what are common? The biggest one, I don't know if this is necessarily a marriage killer, but it, it is it is something that comes back to haunt a lot of people once the, they have decided that they want a divorce. And, and that is failing to participate in the financial affairs, conversations, decisions of the family home. What we see a lot of times, and I'm, I'm not trying to be sexist here, so please don't take it, take it that way, but I've been doing this 20 years and there is definitely a theme. Usually it's the man in, in, uh, who is the financial decision maker in the home. He's been, you know, mom staying at home. Traditionally, mom stays at home, takes care of the kids. And, you know, the husband is the one that is you know, the breadwinner, kind of just like it was in my situation. We'll use my situation as an example. I worked, you know, Monday through Friday. I was outside of the home. I traveled some, so I was I was gone a lot. And but I was the breadwinner, right? I had all the I had the retirement accounts, and we had I had um, access to the you know the, the 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 bank accounts, and I would I would be very diligent in monitoring the cash flow and all this other stuff. And and my now ex wife didn't really participate in those conversations. Yeah. Didn't really know how much we were putting away for, for retirement how to even log into the bank accounts, right? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't because I wasn't, I was, there was financial abuse involved because some people will do this where we'll try to hide this information for people so they can, you know, have, you know, things going on off to the side like marital affairs or their, or their, maybe their, uh, they have a gambling problem or whatever it is. And they want to hide that from their spouse. That was not the case here. It was just a failure to participate in the financial conversation, the family conversation that you have to have around finances. And then, what usually happens is exactly what happened in my situation is that once the divorce is finalized, they're clueless, right? So you don't want to be that person. You want to be sitting there in your financial advisor's office with your spouse, making decisions together, learning more about the investments you have and how, how you're planning for retirement, what that retirement's going to look like and what your plan projections look like. And that way, if God forbid, it comes to the point where you know, you you are going to have to get a divorce. You know what is going on and you're not. And, and we see this happen, not just in divorce. We see this happen with death and dying. We work with we work. I work with you know thousands of, of families over the years. And inevitably, you, you lose a client or two every year because somebody has passed away. If you're not participating in those conversations, you're 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 trying to make financial decisions in this tornado of emotions that is going, that are going on, instead of allowing yourself to say, you know what, I know where my financial advisor's office is. I know how to log into my bank accounts. I know what we've saved for retirement. I know there's an insurance policy over here that's gonna help me. I know what our financial plan looks like. Now I can just focus on mourning the loss of my loved one. So whether you're mourning the loss through death or whether you're mourning the loss of relationship by divorce, you need to be able to process those emotions and, and take time with that. And if, and if you, if you're trying to do that at the same time, you're trying to figure out where, how to log into your bank account because you didn't participate all these years, it, 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 can, it can, it can hurt it, in, in more ways than one. And I, I see people lose out because of that. So that, that's a killer right there. <laughs> He said it. He he said it, y'all. This is this is this is huge. I I have a background in finance, and too many times, too many times, the 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 husband, like you said, the example is more more common than you think. The husband is a breadwinner. The wife is a stay at home wife. You know, even long after the kids are grown and adults, and then the husband passes away. And too many times, though. I've had too many mothers, too many spouses come to me with a stack of papers this thick and drop it on my desk. And because they don't know where the money comes from, they know how to spend the money, but
but they don't know where the, the, the social security come from. She don't know the difference between social security and pension money. She don't know the difference from 401k money. She don't know where the life insurance is. She don't know who to call. She found all this stack of paper and she dropped it on my desk and she wants me now at the end of his life to figure out where all of this is, is coming from and how to turn it off and what to turn on and how to initiate um, who to send a death certificate to, which life insurance policy is still active, which is no longer active. It's a huge mess. And and I remember Dave Ramsey said um, at, at their financial meeting, and you can imagine as, as big as Dave Ramsey's legacy is, you can imagine how in-depth and thorough and how many financial advisors and, and aficionados he has on his team. But he had to grab his wife by his her face and pull it in close and say, honey, this is important. I need you to pay attention at this meeting because she was so disengaged at these financial meetings. She wasn't attending all the meetings. She was just like, oh, whatever. You know, I know where um, you're going to set me up. Gonna, He's like, no, you need to be involved. You need to know who to talk to. If something happens to me, you know, that the company isn't going to fall to Riker and just dissipate because I'm gone. So yeah. huge. One more round of applause for that. <laughs> Spilling tea. Mr. Lima is spilling all the tea here on Gentleman Style Podcast Show. Sir, that that's huge and that's major. And and, and without, you know, I know you have um, to protect the rights of your clients, but can you share a story, if possible, about the worst um, divorce that you've seen? What's the worst divorce you've seen someone go through mm. financially? You know, we 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 do work with a lot of people um, that have had some pretty challenging situations. You know, there. Luckily, we we have you know a handful that are uh, things are very amicable. They're willing to work together, and you know they just they just want to move on with their lives. The good majority of them are not not that way. We we work with a lot of people. We have a handful of clients right now um, that are in situations where there's domestic violence involved. I have one who she you know she's living in a shelter, and we're trying to you know make sure she has enough you know cash flow coming in to be able to to feed herself and and, and her kids while while the dust is settling on the divorce. There's some pretty pretty awful scenarios out there. Um, from a financial perspective, the the case that comes to mind is one that we we are we're slowly slowly wrapping up. There were about fourteen hundred pages worth of discovery in this particular case. There's stacks and stacks of information, and and it comes back to my comments just a moment ago, where this gentleman, if you want to call him that. that was trying to financially abuse the wife in such a way where he had he has LLCs that have multiple you know and then they do multiple things but some of the LLCs that he has own other LLCs so there's all this money flying around this this you know he's pulling he's pulling a draw from this LLC but he's taking this money and putting it into another one and that company's doing something else and there's this spider web of transactions that we're working to to untangle and and help her understand really at the end of the day what she owns and we're we're a couple months into this of working on this project and it's a little bit slow going because we're getting we're getting information in fits and starts so we get piles of information that we get nothing for a couple of weeks but th this one's the more one of the more, more challenging ones that we've worked on at least this year for sure and, and and a lot of it comes down to her not participating in the conversations, her being very, you know, unaware of what some of the things that she was signing off on. I mean, they have real estate that she bought that she didn't even know she bought because he was just like, yeah, you know, sign these documents and and I'm going to take it from there. And, you know, that's it's there's a little bit of shame on you for for doing that, because now you're trying to figure it all out and and it's complex. And, and, and that's, that's a, it's a big challenge, man. I mean, but there's also that element of financial abuse, which we see a lot. And, and if it, it's hiding, hiding financial information and try, trying to confuse the other person and, and, and do some things that are not necessarily uh, the most ethical in order to hide, hide money. You know, we, we have business, own, we have business owners that hide a ton of personal expenses in their businesses that, we have to we have to search for and add back to ensure that we you know our clients 
are getting their fair shake and 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 that payor in in this case the business owner is is we're 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 showing exactly how much money they're making and they're not you know we're not letting them hide it which can which can be a challenge wow wow yeah. i see what you were saying Th thank you for that that's that's major y'all there are some real monsters out there y'all there's some real monsters out here and mr lima and his company are here to help you take those monsters out if anything, make you more aware of what your options are and what your possibilities are. So the power in, in having wise counsel, you, you can't get any better than Mr. Lima and what he's doing. Because as you just heard, there are some monsters out there and you need to arm yourself with professionals and, and, and true professionals, real professionals with a heart of gold that are going to take you by the hand and say, listen, you'll get through this, but we, we, I need your help. And, and yeah. they'll work with you side by side, Mr. Lima and his team, to make mm -hmm. sure that, you know, 14 pages of, of I, I imagine, this is bold print documents. This is tiny ink documents that he's forging through to find this woman um, what she's entitled to. That's not easy. And it, it takes a true heart of gold to do that. So shout out to you and your team, Mr. Lima. That's, Thanks, that's, man. Yeah, that's 1,400, 1,400 pages. I don't know if I've, that's probably the most we've seen so far, 1,400. We had to uh, we had to actually go out and create a table of contents for ourselves in the document because that way we knew like okay the the Merrill Lynch account is on page seven hundred and twelve you know we, we, or as opposed to having to sort through all that information all the time it's it's pretty pretty crazy that's intense that's intense speaking of divorce I don't want my sponsors to divorce me um, you can find this podcast on anywhere iHeartRadio, radio radio.com Apple iTunes YouTube Facebook Facebook business page we are gonna go to a quick commercial break we're gonna pay some bills we'll be right right back for mr. Lima and more stay with us stay tuned we'll be right right back baby gear services DMV specializes in high quality baby gear rentals in the Maryland and DC metro area. We have a wide range of baby gear items for rent, including wooden cribs, car seats, high chairs, and more. We also offer seasonal specials and free delivery. Our prices are very versatile to cover every budget. Wooden cribs start at $17 a day, high chairs, and even car seats start at $5 a day. Check out our website, www.bgsdmv.com. Are you a local business looking to offer your customers easy access to cash without having to travel miles? We're here to help. At Norman Legacy Investments, we provide free ATMs with free installation that provide a suitable investment for your business. Even better, we offer you some profit sharing and handle everything from start to finish. Just reach out to us today to schedule a free consultation. We are back to the German Style Podcast Show. We have the incredible Mr. Amazing, Mr. Graham Poobah himself, Jamie Lima, certified financial planner and certified financial, uh, forgive me, certified divorce financial analyst expert on the show here today on Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And he is spilling some absolute gold nuggets to help you, to help me, to help all of us do better going through or potentially about to go through the divorce process. If you missed any of that, go back, scroll back and check him out. Uh, it is absolutely phenomenal and absolutely powerful. Sir, in this day and age, um, because you, you, you mentioned this earlier, there's some, some, it's not the stone ages anymore where the man is making all the money and women suffer. Women suffrage is a real thing. And so, um, especially back back in the day back you know you go back 100 years women didn't have the right to vote education or a job um but that is no longer the case women are running fortune 500 companies and tackling major industries that were predominantly um occupied by men these days and so can you break down or, or point out some tips some strategies some mindsets when dealing with high net worth individuals in a marriage on on when when you're talking to couples that that equally have, you know, a high net worth. Are there any strategies or tips or things they should consider um, before coming to you and reaching out to you? Relative to divorce or traditional financial planning? Divorce. 
yeah. when it comes to divorce? What things should a high net worth individual think about when he, not only the man, but the woman also has um, some some money to lose as well financially? Yeah. Great question. We we have a good, a really good resource that people can download for free just on our website, which I'm sure you're going to provide the links to the site later. But uh, on our website, there's a free resources page. And on that page, there is a document list. And with the document list, it allow, it allow you to start organizing the information you're going to need to start to gather, not only from the other side, but for, for yourself as well, to, fe- to, to be able to put together your case you know and i mentioned earlier about the 1400 pages worth of discovery well we are getting that a lot of that in fits and starts we're getting tax returns you know one day the next day we'll get a statement for something else and so on and so forth so if you look at the um there's a if you go to the uh, there's an inventory checklist right so that we have the household inventory checklist well i guess we'll just walk through let's just walk through this whole page here so we have the inventory checklist and the beauty of, of that checklist, which should be loading, I'm not, there it is, is it allows you to, to, to literally go room by room in your home and document the important possessions, right? I don't know if you need to go through the exercise of counting underwear. We actually had a case with this. This is, um, this is not a joke. We had people that were counting their personal belongings down to the, fa- the, down to the, the number of underwear, it's pairs of socks, which was a little bit crazy. But you can go through this, use this worksheet, and we don't ask for email, phone number, and all that other stuff. Like some, you know, we're not gonna put you on a spam list. You can go to the website, download the document, and then you walk around the house. We're like, okay, like, you know, I ended up getting, you know, this art from my grandmother after she passed away, or um, my my aunt's, you know, the, the the china she gave us at at our wedding. And you just start documenting all this and like, who owns what? Is it is it something that we bought together? Is it something that was given to me? so on and so forth. And, and that will give you a, a good opportunity to make sure that when you start going through negotiations and figuring out what you're going to walk away with, it will help, help you with the negotiation, right? Like, well, hey, you know, you keep that set of furniture. I'm going to take this other set because, you know, we ha- we're we now going to have two homes that we're going to have to to furnish or whatever. Um, that's been super helpful. But there's, a, there's also a document list on there that I mentioned earlier. It's going to give you the list of things that not only ourselves and our your attorney, if you have to go the route of getting an attorney, attorney is, um, and it's just going to give you an opportunity to just say like, hey, listen, like here's my tax returns, my W-2s, so on and so forth, because you want to be as organized as you possibly can when you come into meetings with us. And we want to spend less time rifling through it or sending you back to get information. So if you come prepared, uh, to, to conversations with folks like us and, and your financial planner or your attorney, it's going to be, it's going to be really, really helpful. Um, I'm trying to think, and, and I think, you know, one of the bigger things really is, is taxes, you know, so we, we want to know, you know, who your other professionals are. We want to have a relationship with them. If you have a financial planner, we want to be talking to them. If you're going to get an attorney, we want to be talking to them. And the more high net worth these, these divorces are, the more, the more is at stake. And the more coordinated these efforts across your professionals need to be. And a lot of times we'll coordinate quarterback those, those conversations and sometimes just leave you out of it because we can work with, with your permission. We can work with, with the, those folks on your behalf and help, you know, take some of the work, the work off of your shoulders, so to speak. By the way, y'all, this is a free resource. This is a free resource. I, that checklist, you have no idea. Uh, uh, Mr. Lima, how, well, you do, but my audience, you guys have no idea how important and significant and powerful that checklist is, especially if you're a high net worth individual. Um, I had a friend, he was a warrant officer in the Navy um, going through a divorce. And the gentleman, um, he, he came to work one day, and he was just bawling tears. His eyes were red, puffy face, everything, face was swollen. And I asked him, I said, what's going on, man? And what had happened was, you know, his family in his in his family his line before he got married there was a there was like this this token this family heirloom that was passed down to every firstborn male son and it was a model ship it was a model ship one of those model ships that you craft in the jar and mm-hmm. it was passed down from son to son to son i think it got all the way to like 20 generations of men so you can imagine how how long that is, right? Yeah. And yeah. in the, and in his proceeding in the divorce process, um, he was he had to leave the house. He couldn't 
um, go home. The wife was in the house and all he wanted was his, his ship, his family heirloom, right? It had no value to her, right? It had no value to her. And all he wanted was the, the ship. And one day, that day that I saw him crying, um, he had drip <laughs> and, and don't, don't ask me who the guy is, but he had driven by the house and he went in the trash can. And he found the the model ship and the and the jari was in shattered to pieces. And so that checklist um is powerful because you can it, 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 am I correct? Is it for both parties for them to just go through and say, hey, um, this checklist here, um, this this is it, this is significant to me. I, I would like to keep it. it, it am I right, Mr. Lima, or is it just for absolutely? Us? Yeah, I mean that's we we use that um, you know in mediation. So when we have when we 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 go through mediation with with some of our clients, and when you mediate a case, so this is very very different than the divorce financial planning that we do because the divorce financial planning is usually a contested situation. Right? They've they have attorneys or they're going to be involved involve the courts. Now we're there to help people with with their argument towards why they deserve what they're what they're asking for in the divorce. Well, mediation is an uncontested situation where you have two parties that just want to avoid going to sitting in the courtroom and, and they want to handle this like adults and get through this process together. And one of the things that we, we have to do in order to get an uncontested divorce is we have to check the box on about 20 or 25 things in order for the courts to accept the agreement that we draft. One of, uh, uh, I shouldn't say one, but a section of those 25 things is personal belongings. And we have situations where, you know, we'll just like the, the, the wife brings her list, the husband brings his list. We sit together and go, okay, well, here are the things that she's asking for. Here's what you're asking for. How can we make this work together? And, you know, then you just let them hash it out and, and work on an agreement and, and they can walk away knowing that. They're not leaving anything on the table and they're, they're going to be able to walk away with the, everything that they want. And it's also a way for you to inventory the asset, because if something does go missing, there is recourse from a legal perspective. Right. So if you going back to the contested situation, if you if it is contested and you're arguing over possessions and then, you know, and your, your situation is is not not unheard of. Right. I mean, I, I can show you pictures of my belongings in a trash can for when, after I left my house. <laughs> mm. So, and for the record, that is domestic violence. Okay. What, what the if ship? You're, if, you're, if you're the ship and throwing away somebody else's possessions like that, that is a form of domestic violence that you can have recourse against. So- But, but when you're married, it's what's, what's hers is mine and what, isn't it, right? Well, this is post-separation, right? Mm. So we're, we're, you know, we might still be married on paper, but we're living separate lives. And this is, this is going down the path. It sounds exactly like the same situation that your, your friend was in. So yeah. in my particular state, we didn't, you know, we didn't go the route of getting, you know, requesting a domestic violence training order or anything along those lines. But, you know, there's that, you don't just get to like ruin people's things because you're angry. Right. And and if you if I had gone through this exercise myself, another mistake that I made in my divorce, you know, I'm not perfect. Even though I'm in, I, I'm in this world, I made mistakes in my own divorce. And this is why I'm so adamant about other people getting access to these tools and resources, because I probably I probably left twenty thousand dollars worth of personal possessions in that house that I walked away with. And I never got access to any of them. My God. And, and you don't want to be that, that person. And it's it's all part of the negotiations. Right. I mean, it's like. Hey, no problem. I'll give you that stuff, but I want credit on the other side for something else because you're just not going to walk away from, from, from assets, tangible assets and, and having checklists and just being able to document some of this stuff is, is incredibly powerful in these cases. Super, super powerful. Okay. I want to, I want to, this is, this is necessary, right? I want to be very respectful, right? Cause I got, I got fem women that watch this show. So yep. can you speak to the emotional aspect? Right. Could you uh, in your experience, how does the emotional aspect of divorce impact financial decision making? And how do you guide your clients through these these challenges when when dealing with emotions? Emotions are a divorce killer. And when I say that and, and I and I mean, hey, listen, 90 percent of our the clients we work with 
are, are female. So I, I recognize that there's emotions involved and we work really, really hard to help people contain them and make pragmatic decisions. And the, and the way that we do that is trying to remind all of our clients that they are now the CEO of their life. Right. Marcus, I'm sorry you're getting a divorce, but you are now the CEO of Marcus Incorporated, right? And you're gonna have to start making better decisions. Like you're gonna operate like the CEO of a business. All of your, and, and your soon to be ex-spouse is a former employee or soon to be former employee. You're gonna be very pragmatic. You're gonna be very practical. You're gonna set the emotions aside. And you're gonna and and you're gonna make sure you it, especially with your communications with your ex-spouse, you are going to leave those communications out of the out of this process. All of your emails are very short, concise, to the point, and you're gonna leave the emails out, right? No, no email, no war and peace emails about how they broke your heart and all this other stuff. There's no you know. 150 page, 150 word text messages, none of that stuff. Because sometimes that stuff ends up in the court of law on a gigantic projector screen for the public, the judge, your ex-spouse, the attorneys, and everybody to see. And you want to make sure that that's not going to happen because if it does, it could impact the case. So it's very, very difficult, but you have to try to remember to be the CEO of your life especially in this particular case. There are some amazing resources out there that people should be leveraging. And this kind of goes back to the, like, I have all these little mottos. Another motto is you're, when you, when you go down this path, you should be creating team. You, you have your therapist to help you handle the emotional aspects of things. There are people that are out there that are called the divorce coaches. I had no idea these people existed when I went through my own divorce. I really wish I would have known that they existed. We work with a number of divorce coaches and they will help you not only on the emotional aspects of the divorce, but help you through the process and understand what comes next and how to think through mediation and how to strategize around it, how to work with professionals like us and so on. And they will help you with all those things. So you have the emotional aspects handled over here. We help with the financial and then there's usually an attorney involved. And, and then the one thing you people do not want to forget to help handle the emotions, just going to come back to your question, is to not push loved ones away. That was one of the biggest mistakes that I made in my own divorce. I just tried to keep everybody at arm's length because I didn't want them involved. I didn't want them to think that I, I, to worry about me. I didn't want them to have to be involved in the conversations about it. I was like, listen, I've got this handled. And then started pushing family members away instead of bringing them in and helping them understand what I was feeling and, and being there to support me. And by doing that, I actually lost some family members because of it which is incredibly sad, but if you let the emotions get involved and you're not, and you don't have all these pieces of the puzzle together and you're not handling all of them, it, it is going to lead to bad financial decisions. I just see it time and time again. Wow. 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 This is epic. This is, this is huge. And you, sir, are spilling some absolute tea. You are a true <laughs> professional in this game, and you are, you are, he's speaking to me, y'all. He's talking to me. So th th I don't know about y'all, but this is, is necessary. This is huge. And this is the type of thing that I feel like we should have had, you know, 20, 30, 50, 100 years ago. <laughs> it's an expert to, to, to really, he said it, emotions have no room for this, right? This is, we're going to be coherent, responsible, mature adults. Um, during this process. And if we could get both parties on, on the same page, we would find that, you know, it makes sense. Hey, I want that ship. That's a family heirloom. It means nothing to you. Can I please have it back? Oh yeah. I don't need it. I, you know, that's, that's clearly yours. Let me give it back to you. But you, you need that mediator. You need that professional, that man in the middle, that woman in the middle to help us negotiate those terms and just say very plainly like that. Like this ship means nothing to you. Give it back to him, <laughs> you know, and she and she couldn't contain her emotions. Right. So rather than going and punching a pillow because she was angry or screaming into a pillow because she was angry, she decided to take it out. And, and if it, 
effectively there, there's some violence there, right? I mean, you're, you're destroying somebody else's possessions. That's violence because you can't handle the emotions. And who wins? Who wins in that situation? He's devastated and she's still getting a divorce. It doesn't change anything. So, so why bother? Why bother? It's a lose lose. Have you had, have you had any cases where they started on the path of divorce and they would start working with you and then they're like, no, nah, we're going to work it out. We're going to, yeah. we're going to fix things. Any of that? Yeah, we've, we've had a couple of those cases. We've had a couple of those cases where there's, there's some level of reconciliation or, or I, I don't know how long that's going to last given what I know about the cases, mm. but they're, <laughs> but they're, but they are, they're certainly a, let's give it one more go because there's a lot at stake here. And, and, I, and I think even just spending time with us, even just spending time with us and reviewing the financial information and what's at stake. And, and we don't work with both parties unless we do a mediation. So we are we, we either do we do one of two things. Right. So we're either an advocate for a party. We do um, some mediation and then we'll also do what's called kind of a collaborative, amicable divorce scenario. Uh, where we'll work with uh, we'll work with parties and other attorneys and other financial experts that that want to get them through the process in an amicable way. So I, I said there were two ways, but there's really three. So there's the amicable, there's mediation, which is just the three of us, the husband, the wife, and myself, usually walking through the mediation process, or we come in as an advocate. And in many cases, when we are the advocate and we've helped them understand what is at stake and like, this is how much you might be paying in alimony. This is how much is going to be called for child support. This is how much you're going to, how you're going to have to divide these assets. This is what it would look like if you were in the court of law and how the, how the judge would usually uh, agree on this. It, it, it can sometimes put people in a position where they're like, Oh, wow, there really is a lot here. Let's, let's give it another go and see if we can make this work. Cause there's a lot at stake. We'll see, you know, only time will tell what, how that actually transpires with, some, with a couple of these cases, but um there's been a little bit of reconciliation yeah okay so it's not yeah. all laws but if you guys want him right if it's not mediation and you guys need mr lima on your side you want to book him first right that's the, I'm yeah <laughs> yeah we can't we can't do mediation if we've if we started as an as a media we can't do both right we are either a mediator and we're going to come in as a as a total neutral we won't give anybody financial advice we won't give anybody tax advice or legal advice we're just going to facilitate the divorce agreement that's where so if we start down that path and then it does, it starts to fall apart. We do have to refer out to another CDFA uh, because we cannot take that case because we've been conflicted out and vice versa. We can't start as an advocate and then go into mediation because, because there are conflicts of interest we have to be aware of. So, so I want to, I want to, I want to make sure I, I nail this, right? If you start with me, you can't transfer to mediating both parties because you started Correct. with me with the financial Correct. advice and diving deep with me and giving me advice. So you can't Correct. switch roles and then vice versa. If you mediate both parties, you can't now take the wife's side or the husband's side in it. You can't switch. Correct. So, Correct. so, so I, I point that out because ladies and gentlemen, um, that's key, right? Cause you know, your partner, Mr. Lima and his team does not know your partner. You know, your partner, you've been married for however long, you know, your partner best. So if you know out the gate, when you bring up, hey, I have this gentleman, I found him on this incredible podcast with a microphone and he can mediate our case. And she says, hell no, nah. you want to be the one to call and get Mr. Lima on your side so he can give you the best advice possible. Because if she locks him down or he locks him down, it's it's too late. He can't go the other way. Yeah. So powerful, powerful. <laughs> this is gold. This is gold. I'm going I'm to get you out of here on this one because I want to be very respectful of your time, but I can't pass this over. Um, can you discuss the importance of a qualified domestic relations order Ooh. and how it impacts retirement assets in a divorce, sir? Absolutely. The qualified domestic relations order or quadro, as, as it's used uh, interchangeably, is effectively a document that is created in order to divide up retirement assets in a divorce. So this is things like 401k plans, 403b plans, 457s, TSAs, you know, all the government, your, your friend's military pension uh, for being in the military, things of that nature, right? We don't, this is, this is not in relation to individual retirement accounts, brokerage accounts, 
Roth IRAs. It's not, it's not in relation to those. Those are owned by somebody individually. These are plan sponsored type of type of uh, accounts. So what happens when you get to the tail end of the divorce and you've decided how you're going to divide up your, those retirement assets, let, let's just say for example, you know, you're going to split the 401k in half. Well, you need a qualified domestic relations order or a quadro drafted by a professional to then send instructions to the 401k plan. It has to be accepted by the plan in order, in, in, which is ultimately what makes it qualified until it's until it's been accepted. It is a domestic relations order. It is then qualified by the plan sponsor. But they'll send notification back and say, "Okay, we've we agree to the terms of the of how this is drafted. It checks all the boxes." And we're going to use, they will then the plan sponsor, but I used to work for a company called Fidelity Investments. So we'll use them as an example. They will open up a company like Fidelity will open up a, a second account for the spouse. They will then transfer half of the 401k plan into the uh, new plan for the, the spouse who is receiving those assets and the, um, uh, the document will be, be filed away at that point. So the, that that document has to be drafted by a professional, has to have all the, the, the preferred language. It is incredibly technical. It is incredibly time consuming. And if you don't get it right, it can be it can waste a lot of time and money. So we provide that service for all of our clients. But we actually use a third party who do, they do about three or four thousand of these a year. Um, I started doing that work and I realized that it was taking way too much time and it was very, very boring. And so I do not like doing that work, but we will coordinate um, with that with that team, and we'll also claim, work with the plan sponsor, and we'll also work with our clients to ensure that they're getting all you know they're getting their fair share and um, dividing up the right way. And it's done. It's we're basically quarterback the whole process on our side, but it is it is very very time consuming, and and you you can make a lot of mistakes with it if you're not careful. But you're but you're familiar with it. So even though you may not be the, the one drafting it, you can still you can help me understand it. Right. You you can still explain. Oh, 100 percent. 100 percent. I've familiar. seen a thousand. I've seen a thousand of them in my day. We've done. I, I worked for Fidelity Investments for nine years. So we worked with a we've worked with a ton of 401k plans. Pretty much everybody we work with had a 401k. So it's uh, we've done this a, a bunch of times. And another free resource. If you go to the blog on our website, there is a quadro guide that you can go and review all the terms and how it works, what the process is, and so on and so forth, all on the website. More free resource for you. The gentleman style mascot like that. We like that one. The mascot likes that one. He said the magic word, y'all. Free. It's free. It don't cost you a thing. It's absolutely free. Sir, this has been an epic conversation. This has been an epic interview. You have shared so many tips, so many nuggets. Sir, what do you see coming down the pipeline, looking forward towards the future? What are some emerging trends in divorce financial planning that you think our listeners should be aware of? Well, I think it's gonna it's gonna get more complex and more complicated because because our lives are getting more complicated, right? I mean, people that we work with, there's they're I don't know about you, but you know my my grandparents and even my father has a pension from the company that he worked for. Only about three percent of companies now provide a pension for their employees as a retirement benefit. So now the onus is on us to save for retirement in our four hundred one ks and so on and so forth, which means that we have more wealth to deal with. Right, we're not relying on the company; we have our own self made wealth. And that's in the form of homes that we own and rent rental properties and retirement assets and so on and so forth. So it's not just, I have my 401k and I might have a pension and then that's it. There are a lot of moving parts. So I feel like this is only going to get more complex and more complicated. And like I mentioned earlier, a lot of the people that are now in their twenties and thirties, most of their compensation with a lot of these companies that are out there is through the form of executive compensation stock options and RSUs and you know all the employee stock purchase plans all that stuff and you have to understand all the nuances of all of them so it's it's you have to understand that there's it, it really is just so much more complex these days and 10 years ago 12 you know 15 years ago when people were getting divorced they didn't have to worry about dividing up bitcoin 
now you have to worry about that stuff and things like uh, airline miles and, and hotel benefits, all of those ancillary things didn't exist even 20 years ago. So that's where we're, we're starting to see all those things, you know, start to come to a head now and, and be involved in some of these discussions. And, and again, it's only going to get more complex. So I feel like I'm going to be gainfully employed for the foreseeable future. Mr. Lima, you've shared so many nuggets this episode, and, and, and I know you dropped a bomb today on this interview. Sir, if, if you had one more nugget in the hat, that young man, that young woman out in the audience, her back's against the wall. She's going through a tumultuous divorce. The man is conniving. There's, there's hidden money everywhere. There's, 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 you know, Bitcoin, there's stashing. Any final nuggets, any word of advice to that young boy watching you right now on the stage, and what would you say to them right now and give them uh, one more nugget of advice on what to do? Somebody very early on in my career told me to use my resources use your resources and i feel like we don't do a very good job of doing that sometimes right sometimes sometimes the answers you need are out there you just have to go find them right you have to talk to professionals you have to talk to mentors you have to talk to family members you have to do your own research and then sometimes you have to do even more research on the research that you've done right but you have to use your own you have to use your resources and there are resources available to you that are out there I mean, we're providing tons of free resources, guys, right? Like the, all the free resources that are on the website, we put out, I mean, we're, we're putting out two or three, we have a, a Facebook group called Preparing Financially for Divorce. And we we are, um, you know, we, we are, we're gaining momentum on that every single day, but three or four times a day, we're putting out free information, tips and tricks and things you need to be thinking about and trying to share content and video content and all the stuff that's out there. It's available for the taking without having to sign up or give us your credit card and all this other stuff. So, and I'm just one person, right? There's, we're in, in a small team here. There's tons of people that are out there that are doing the same thing and you just need to go out there and just, it, just access the resources that are available to you because they're not going to come to you. You have to go out there and get them. This has been an incredible episode. This has been informational, insightful, and epic. I, I love what I do. I love this. <laughs> I love this. Sir, I want to say from the bottom of my heart, and I want to speak, tell you to never give up. We need you. We need what you're doing. We need what you're putting down. We need the facts. We need the help. We need help. So continue to do and never quit. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate you. Absolutely. And thank you all, my audience, for the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I hope this message was insightful. I hope this was epic. I hope this helped you the same way and more than it helped me. Because Mr. Lima, is what, is what he's putting down is phenomenal and it's necessary. So we got to be respectful of this man's time. He has many more people to help, many more families to, to, to help through the divorce process. So we got to let him go. So time has run out on us. But like we end every show. Take care of your friends, take care of your family, and always, always take care of business. This is Marcus, your favorite gentleman, and the incredible, the amazing Mr. <laughs> Jamie Lima, super fragilistic espialidocious, helping you get to a better place. Signing off. Love you guys. Bye.